Well, hey guys, <laughs> who's excited? Winter is over. I know for those of you who watch me from much colder areas of the world, I'm sure that you are elated that spring is officially here. Um, it has been less than winter for quite some time here in Houston. So hopefully the summer is not too brutal. But it's that time of the year. Um, I like to do my seasonal skincare empties, um, seasonally, <laughs> obviously. And so I'm gonna share with you guys everything that I used up this past winter. I went through quite a bit. I am not outdoors or out in the car that much. So, I mean, at all, really. Probably my, my highest outdoor exposure day in a typical week is going to be Thursday where I go and run errands. Um, but for the most part, I am indoors and I am not even, I would say 80% of my day at least, I'm indoors without a lot of window exposure. So my baseline application pattern for most days is to apply sunscreen at least three times a day. Once in the morning, once in the midday, and then when I get home, I always apply it before I go to the gym because in my gym, there are windows. So I apply it there. Um, so that's kind of my typical use of sunscreen. And so as a result, three times a day, you know, I, I still go through a fair amount of sunscreen as you will see. Um, okay, so first up, I use this every morning. Um, it is the Elta MD UV Sport Broad Spectrum SPF 50. This, you know, I, I really love this. I think it's one of their more affordable sunscreens. It does leave quite a bit of a shine, quite a bit of shine to it. So it's very moisturizing, but some people are not going to like kind of the greasy appearance of it. But for me, I, I happen to like it. Um, and uh, it's a combination sunscreen, meaning it's zinc and octinoxate. Um, and it is water resistant up to 80 minutes. Um, and a note about reapplying it at least three times a day. You know, the reason for that is even if you apply it in the morning and you were in a cave all day, it's a behavior that's best put into place because unforeseeable things occur in your day-to-day -day life. There could be a fire alarm that goes off. You never know when you're gonna get pulled outside and it's just good to have the behavior in place. Um, and that way you don't have to get back in the habit of it if you transition to a period of your life where you are outdoors more often or by a window more often. So it's simply the act of doing a behavior. So that's why it's important. And the other reason that it's important to reapply it every three, at least three times a day is that if most people apply it in the morning, like when they're getting ready. And so the sunscreen will be, you know, worn off probably two, three hours after, after you apply it, maybe four hours of, of good, reliable coverage. And if you think about it, that window of time is actually when the sun is not at its most potent, you know, the peak exposure happens in midday. And so if you only apply it in the morning and you don't reapply it again at some point, you know, in the afternoon, your, your chances of getting more of a peak exposure and intense exposure are, are you know, higher and you're not, not protected. So that is, that's a point that I wanted to emphasize, but that's a good one. It reapplies easily. It doesn't leave a cast to it, um, but it is a combination sunscreen. So it's zinc and octinoxate. Um, and if you are somebody who is sensitive to chemical filters at all, they sting, they irritate you, they burn. Um, another one that I finished up and would strongly recommend, it is on the pricier side, but it really has a nice um, aesthetic to it and that there's no cast, is the MD Solar Science Mineral uh, SPF 50. This is likewise water resistant up to 80 minutes. And uh, it's only mineral and therefore it uh, you know doesn't have those filters. I really like this one quite a bit and finished it up. I wish it were in a bigger bottle. Um, okay, and then a chemical European sunscreen that I finished and really enjoyed is the Water Resistant Ultra Sun SPF 50 Anti-Aging and Anti-Pigmentation Sun Protection for Ultra Sensitive Skin. 
This is, I got this on the, uh, you can buy this on Amazon UK. Um, this contains uh, tinosorb in it, or bimetrizol, it, it contains bimetrizinol and biscotrizol, which both give, are filters that are not approved here in the, the States for use in sunscreens, but they give good coverage, uh, not only for UVB, but for both UVA1 and UVA2. So they're protecting a very good broad, broad spectrum of rays. It also has um, uh, opti, uh, I think it's octisalate in here as a UVB filter. It does not contain avabenzone, and I believe it does not contain oxybenzone either. So uh, for those of you who don't care for those filters, this is free of that. And I really like it. It has a very nice aesthetic to it, and it um, just kind of leaves a very nice, uh, like, dewy sheen to the skin. I really like it and I recommend it. So I finished that one. There's just a little bit in there. Um, so I have enough to, to share with you guys in a, in a more specific video. All right, now a drugstore love is the Olay Complete uh, SPF 30. This is like the l md a combination sunscreen. It is not water resistant. Um, so it's just a good, you know, kind of everyday moisturizing sunscreen, easy to reapply, it does not leave a cast, it is fantastic for sensitive skin, fantastic for oily prone skin. If you are in the market for an affordable drugstore sunscreen, I recommend this. I've tried several other Olay sunscreens with mm, not so not so uh, enthusiastic <laughs> on my part outcomes just as far as the aesthetics, um, but this one is a win and I strongly recommend it and I finished that. Um, and then another drugstore sunscreen that I um, really enjoyed, although the bottle was really small. Where did he go? He's floating around in here somewhere. Um, is the CeraVe Ultra Light Moisturizing Lotion SPF 30. This is chemical only sunscreen. No cast whatsoever, really easy to apply. Unfortunately, it is too small of a bottle. I went through this in like a weekend. Uh, a weekend where I was reapplying more frequently, I'll say that. I wasn't, I was reapplying more frequently than just three times. I think I um, had gone outdoors a fair amount, so I was reapplying every two hours. But it definitely has a matte finish. I love this this one, and uh, I recommend it if you're just looking for, if you're just looking for a sunscreen that doesn't require a lot of working with or trial and error it's pretty it's pretty user friendly you just have to be conscientious that you are reapplying it one last one that i used up is the alley uv media gel i took this on my trips with me this is a japanese uh sunscreen this is fantastic for those of you who wear makeup it has a matte very matte finish and well it's intended to go under makeup actually it is SPF 50 and PA plus 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 so four pluses. PA is um, the um, Asian ra uh, rating rating system in Asian countries for UVA protection. So very good UVA protection, and it um, has tinosorb as well as Uvenol A plus, I think. So those are filters that will give you very good broad spectrum. This does have alcohol in it, which is not a bad ingredient. Uh, but can be a little drying. If you have a rosacea, it can be a, a little irritating and sting, but it makes for good sunscreen. It, uh, sunscreens that have alcohol in them, they tend to be very good for um, oily prone skin because they are very matte and they're excellent for going in the beard area. They don't leave a cast and they they dry nicely and they don't, they don't like deposit on the hair shaft and, and leave that white stuff. So um, this this one's a, you can get on Yes Style, and I, I really enjoyed it. Getting a little four city in here, woohoo! So I wear the Exuviance Mineral Shield. Is it Mineral Shield? The Exuviance Tinted Mineral Sunscreen that I wear every day. I actually haven't finished that up. Um, so I only apply the tinted sunscreens in the morning and I don't reapply them, mostly because it's a lot to take with me. And I still have probably slightly less than a third of that sunscreen left. And I've been using it every day. It has a um, long expiration dates, mineral only sunscreen. And I've really been enjoying that. That and the Color Science Mineral Shield are two of my absolute favorite tinted sunscreens. I, as I said in my um, 
skincare favorites of 2018 video those won and I you know there's some slight differences between the two and I'll probably go back and forth between them but I really like the way they apply so smoothly okay um, but I do also use the color science total eye three in one tinted mineral sunscreen around my eyes I love this product I cannot live without it, it is it has become a must-have for me and I do not have a substitute I definitely think it for me it is definitely worth the price because this is the only thing that will camouflage the veins under my eyes I'm not really bothered by those but I'm so impressed by how this covers it that I've kind of you know grown to grown to like that I like that it, I have extra targeted um, protection again around my eyes where the skin is much thinner and I like that this also has iron oxides in it I so to protect that area from visible light from hyperpigmentation I really love this and it lasts a very long time and the thing about it that makes it nice for camouflaging that vein specifically is that it has a peachy here come up to the viewfinder it has a peachy um, undertone, and so that peach coloration is what you need to mask blue colors in the skin. So if you have blue, anything blue, that's kind of the, the color that you're going with. Yeah, so it really will camouflage that vein, those veins for me very nicely. It just really brightens my eyes up. Like, I definitely can see a difference. Um, I've skipped it a few mornings and I or a few times and I can definitely see a difference um, particularly on the days that I film if I don't wear it I can see noticeable differences um, and so I'm really a fan of that and I love all of their all of their tinted sunscreens okay I also finished up the Elsa MD UV lip balm I love this broad spectrum SPF 31 it is a mineral sunscreen that is very moisturizing and at least this kind of pinky sheer white cast um, that I actually kind of like so I finished that and I also finished up a vanity cream lip uh, SPF just floating around in here somewhere here he is um, the Vanny Cream Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Water Resistant Lip um, uh, Sunscreen. This, this one has a little bit more of a cast to it, but is very easy to work with. Fragrance free, both of these are fragrance free and very, very good for the lips. You know, sunscreens for the lips are very important, but at the same time, the <laughs> devil is in the detail. Some of them can be really irritating and these two are my favorite and those are really the only ones that I enjoy using and use consistently. All right, but moving out of the territory of sunscreen already um, to a lip product that I finished up and have floating around in here and actually enjoyed, surprisingly, um, is the Drunk Elephant Lippy Balm. I um, did actually find that this brightened up the skin on my lips quite a bit. I don't know that I would repurchase this uh, on an ongoing basis because I'm sort of a low maintenance skincare person outside of everything I have to occupy my time with in terms of putting on all the sunscreen. I can't really, you know, comply with a whole lot else. And it really does um, kind of brighten up the lips very nicely. So if you're somebody who has some discoloration around your lips, I know many of you ask me about that a fair amount, consider this. I mean. Of their products it's probably one of the most affordable ones it was not irritating whatsoever and I really have enjoyed this this and finished it up all right so I recently reviewed for you guys not too re well I mean it seems recently but maybe maybe you're like no that was a while ago the Burt's Bees sensitive line I finished up their facial cleanser I really enjoyed this and strongly recommend it I just wish that um, the the packaging were um, maybe a pump bottle would be nice um, like one of those those foam pump bottles or something be easier to get out I find that these squeezy bottles um, because I use uh, because I use facial cleansers in the shower um, I find that you know water can get trapped in this part here and so so this is a really good cleanser if you have sensitive skin. It is pretty effective at removing uh, sunscreen and you know water resistant mascara. Honestly, water will remove sunscreen. Like you don't have to like perseverate over like getting sunscreen off, but water takes it off. 
Uh, but if you're using water resistant sunscreens, you may need a little bit of assistance to expedite that, in which case this is a good choice. I finished up the Burt's Bees Sensitive uh, Moisturizing Cream, the little jar one. I don't have the jar on me because I washed it out and I'm storing little thumbtacks in it. And so I don't actually have that here. But I also finished the Daily Moisturizing Cream in the pump. I really love these Burt's Bees Sensitive line, the Sensitive line specifically products. They are fantastic for people with sensitive skin as well as people with rosacea. They are products to consider because we have a study showing that people with rosacea tolerate these very well. And certain subtypes of rosacea are um, uh, bothered by really heavy occlusive moisturizers and what you'll find with the Burt's Bees moisturizers is they're really lightweight so they kind of they hydrate the skin and with consistent use you get a nice you get a nice um, decrease in transepidermal water loss without without it being too occlusive. So it's very good for, for those rosacea subtypes that are prone to stinging with, with more occlusive moisturizers. All right, shortly after trying the Proteiny Polypeptide Cream, I got back into and rather enjoyed the Derma E Skin Restore Advanced Peptide and Collagen Moisturizer um, and finished that up. I definitely recommend this if you were looking for a cruelty-free and vegan facial moisturizer that has peptides in it, which are costly ingredients. They are useful ingredients in moisturizers. They're just expensive. Um, this has a good array of them along with shea butter, which is a phenomenal emollient and occlusive ingredient for moisturizers and is wonderful. Yeah, I really got into K-Beauty this past season and reviewed for you guys Pyongyang Yule. I really dove into that. That was that was kind of my YouTube challenge. It's not something I ever would have done. Uh, you know, it's a very, very complicated, a lot of products, but I have to say I was pleased with many of them. I uh, wouldn't necessarily repurchase all of them, that's for sure, but I have really enjoyed a majority of the products. I finished up the Pyongyang Yule Moisture Cream. This was okay. I enjoyed it as a shea butter based moisturizer with some of the um, same uh, root extracts that some of the other products have, which are rich in humectants. It's really nice. Um, and I, but I didn't find it was like strikingly superior to any other shea butter based moisturizer. The nutrition cream, however, I haven't finished up, but I definitely found that to be superior to the moisture cream. I can't remember, there's some subtle differences in the ingredients, it's like one root extract versus another. Again, with this line, the Pyongyang Yule, I can't explain it. Um, and I can't say that I can predict or recommend who, if anyone, this will be helpful for. I just found I was taken aback by by how, 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 how my skin changed when I used it. I really did see an increase in skin hydration with these products. Um, all right, so I finished the moisture cream. Two of their products that I finished but don't recommend because they have fragrance in them are the, the facial cleansers, the acne facial cleanser and the cleansing foam. Gosh, this was fun to use though. It was a lot of fun. Um, check out my review of the, these products and you'll see what I mean. But I finished those. Um, also in the Pyongyang Yule, another product though that I would not, I finished, but I'm like, this is kind of getting, this is, yeah, the peeling gel. The peeling gel, I don't think it, it doesn't actually remove dead skin cells. It has like these um, carbomers and like kind of polymeric compounds in it that really just, in combination with the propylene glycol, when you put them on the skin, they, they bead up. It's not, I don't believe it's actually your shedding corneocytes in there whatsoever. But people like doing this. It does have propylene glycol in it, which is a penetration enhancer as well as a humectant. So I suppose from a skin preparation perspective, it makes a little sense. Um, so yeah, there's, there's that. Wouldn't necessarily go back to that one. But one product that clearly I like because I repurchased and, re and used up um, two of, is their acne cream. This is a gel humectant that can be used similarly to how I apply um, the deep dive uh, water cream, which I actually am still using and I'm almost finished with, but it's not completely empty, so wasn't appropriate to, to include here, but finished, finished two of these. 
So for the duration of using these, I use them in lieu of the deep dive uh, water cream that I typically use. And I saw advantage over that in that these have niacinamide and I definitely saw more of a brightening effect and uh, when, I, when I use these over that. And I might consider swapping out, although currently I'm using that and that I've also been using that uh, pep up from uh, Color Science and really liking that. So I don't think I will necessarily go back to it, but I clearly liked it and used two bottles of it. And then I also finished up the Addo Cream Blue label from them. This is just a lightweight moisturizer. I didn't find this was like magical. I wouldn't repurchase this. This is no different as far as like, I mean, if you just ignore the ingredient list and everything about it and put it on your face, this is really no different than like the Neutrogena Sensitive Skin uh, Facial Moisturizer or, you know, uh, CeraVe PM. Honestly, I really saw no difference with this. And it's expensive, so I would not I would not repurchase that. I didn't find that it really changed much of the game for me. I also used the little bottle of the Essence Toner. Look at me, I tried an Essence Toner for you guys. Aren't you proud of me? I finished it up, never saw any difference with this. Um, so I don't, this is not something I would necessarily repurchase, but people swear by this. Um, and honestly, I, I was kind of underwhelmed. Um, it was okay, uh, but not something I would repurchase or reuse. The Pyong Kang Yule product that took me a long time to finish up, it is the Moisture Ampule. This is a phenomenal humectant. I put this onto a wet face and then put on a moisturizer on top and it really seals it in. Check out the routines and you see how I used it. But this definitely does diminish the appearance of pores just by hydrating up the stink out of your face and kind of camouflaging those, those pores and little textural abnormalities and whatnot. So that is, that leads to a striking, a striking change in appearance. Then a, I mentioned that I'm really enjoying the Pep Up, but a peptide containing moisturizing cream that I have really been loving and finished up is the CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Cream. This has, uh, again, shea butter in it, so a good moisturizer. It also has niacinamide and hyaluronic acid, and then it's got two peptides, so not 10 like like color science, but it's got two, uh, and I really enjoyed this. This is phenomenal for winter. It's too heavy, greasy for summer for me, so probably won't repurchase for summertime use, but strongly recommend. All right, then another face wash that I finished up, the Your Good Skin Facial Cleanser. Love this. Gel cleanser with green tea. Highly recommend. It is good for uh, rosacea prone skin, acne prone skin, oily skin, sensitive skin. It's very good. Okay, and then last but not least is a hair product. I finished up the Manoy Coconut Oil, uh, Hask Manoy Coconut Oil Nourishing Shampoo. I rather enjoyed this. This is a very moisturizing shampoo. It is one of those, however, that I did find if I used it daily, that my hair would get a little greasy appearing. I know I say greasy, and I always laugh at myself when I hear, when I edit, so that's why I'm chuckling. Yeah, this has hydrolyzed soy protein in it, so it kind of, that will sort of deposit on the hair shaft, fill in any uneven, like, areas, kind of strengthen the hair shaft, reduce breakage, but it does kind of lead to a buildup if you use it consistently, so, you know, you might want to switch it out, and that's what I ended up doing. It took me a long time to get through it, but I really enjoyed this. I have tried one of their hair masks, and I rather enjoyed it as well, so I think it was the coconut hair mask. It was really nice. I enjoyed this. Um, I'm currently using the Attitude Shampoo. I would alternate this with the Attitude Shampoo, but update if you missed it in my vlog recently. I did not do well with the Alafia um, Shea Moisture Shampoo. I just made my hair look kind of greasy and heavy no matter how, what, no matter what frequency I was using it. So anyways, guys, that is everything that I finished up this spring. I mean, winter. Glad that winter is over, although I can't really complain here in Houston. It's not too bad. We have a few freeze days, but they don't, they pale in comparison to what it's like in New York or 
some of the other some of the places you guys watch me from I I don't miss that that having to shovel snow and so I'm sure you're looking forward to warmer temperatures um, but anyways guys comment below what you used up this winter and I hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe I'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye